Hills. I'm in Desert Hot Springs and I'm doing a cleanse. I actually was soaking out here in the springs a couple days ago when I met two very interesting people, Debbie and Dawn. Um, I talked to them while I was soaking for quite a bit of time. Debbie is, or she had a career as a professional skater and she's also a published author. She wrote a book called The Raw Truth of the Fountain of Youth and she's agreed to share with us some of her wisdom around health um, and fitness, of course. So let me uh, introduce to you now, Debbie Merrill. Woo -hoo! There's Debbie. Woo! Hello, Carol Lynn. Woo! How are you doing today, Dawn? I love it. I'm getting my little fitness workout, of course. Yes, you are. It's not just what you eat, but how you move your body, the people you surround yourself with. Yes, your amen. Your spiritual force, your full creative expression, being in the good outdoors, whether it's God or good outdoors, get it? That's the keys to my Fountain of Youth, which is my new book, The Raw Truth to the Fountain of Youth. And that's how Carol Lynn and I met. Yes. I will tell you, my name is Debbie Merrill. I've been a raw veggie vegan diva for the past 19 years. 29 of those years I've been a vegetarian, then I was a macrobiotic, then I was a vegan, then I was a raw vegan. And what I found out is that what made me sick was not gonna make me better. And I had to stop doing the things that were making me sick and start doing the things that made me feel better. And one of the things that made me feel better was, of course, exercising, moving my body an hour every day, and eating a plant-based diet. Being more conscious about my food, about my environment, about the animals. Look at all these beautiful ducks and everything we have here. Yeah, gorgeous out here. So being more compassionate towards my fellow human being, having a full self-expression, being creative as a woman dancing, Getting that sexuality going. Getting Woo! that groove on. Getting that groove on. Be that diva with the diva. You know, that's all part of it. When you feel good, you look good. When you look good, you feel good. So I became uh, a vegan because I got hepatitis. Oh. Eating raw oysters. Food never did me any good. Now it does me good because I eat the right food. When my mom got cancer, they told her no more animals. And I wondered why they waited till I got hepatitis and she got cancer, not at the same time to tell us that. And I took that to heart. So I stopped eating animals. I stopped drinking alcohol, white flour and sugar. My jumps got higher. I got stronger. I got rid of all my acne, chronic constipation, bloating, candida, addiction to sugar, white flour, coffee, prescription drugs, and I lost 40 pounds. So one, another one of my Merylisms is, it's not what we accomplish in life, but it's what we overcome. And I have overcome so many illnesses <laughs> and addictions in my life through eating a plant-based diet and now a raw vegan 100% for 19 years wow. that I want to share this with the world. And I really think it's the fountain of youth, which is why I told Carolyn that's the title, The Raw Truth to the Fountain of Youth. And I want to share that with the world. And I need TV and I feel like women. Let us be the ones that empower this country to eat more raw fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, sprouted grains, because by eating a more plant-based diet, not at all, but more. Just for some people, it's eating more. Right. We gain our power back, we get our beauty back, we gain our intelligence back, our wisdom, our full self-expression. We become peaceful, we have a peaceful planet, yeah. less war, more yeah. love and compassion, and more consciousness for one another. Yeah, And I that's agree. really what I believe. So if it works for me, it can work for you. I always say inch by inch, it's a cinch, and yard by yard, it's hard. Where am I getting all these great quotes? I'll tell you, hang on one second. Because I love to talk in snippets, <laughs> my girlfriend always says buzzwords, and sometimes I don't like reading, I like reading just a paragraph of the day, a thought, a scenario. In the back of this 500 page Bible, as I call it, it's actually a navigational system. It will help navigate you to where to find the best uh, raw food products, the best uh, cleansing places, the best gurus. The forward was written by Gabriel Cousins, and quotes by Steve Martin. Uh, Debbie is a great teacher and dancer. I would have been lost without her. Wow. Not bragging, but what I'm saying is I've been able to reach people uh -huh. and help people through my health and enroll them in my fitness and my lifestyle because I've become an attraction, not a promotion. It gets contagious. People say to me when I sing karaoke, they go, I hate to sing, but your singing is contagious. Where do you get your energy? And I say raw foods and exercise. So anyway, back to the book. In the back, I have 365 quotes for the day where you can just read one. And I remember when I was down and out, depressed, had insomnia, I was recovering from uh, um, uh, horrible period problems, menstruation problems, depression, um, low self-esteem, 
being overweight, having bad skin, my nails were falling out, my hair was falling out, and I was a beautiful woman, losing it. I would just read little quotes for the day by Louise Hay, Shakti Gawain, and Marianne Williamson, people that have gone before me and that I stick with the winners. You know, uh, there's another great Marilism I love. Uh, don't follow the herd because you'll step in poop. Be a leader <laughs> in life, not a follower. That's a good and, one. Yeah, so one of the quotes here is like, be kind. Every person you meet is fighting a hard battle. More compassion with the raw diet, with a vegan diet. When in doubt, leave it out. You know when you go to that grocery store and you're dying for that like ice cream, you just got to have it, and you'll find 92 ways to Sunday to make it okay because it's sugar-free and it's made at a health food store, and then you'll eat it and the next day you'll feel tired, tired first, and horrible. What do I always feel when I overeat? Tired. If, I, if what I ate, I can't go up and walk around the block and dance, then what I ate wasn't right for me. So I let my body be my barometer. Right. And I always say, you, can, you can't do wrong right, and you can't do right wrong. You know, if you do it right, and you go inch by inch and baby steps towards the goal, eventually you will achieve your, your um, goals. And in here I have a treasure map where you create the perfect body, the perfect romance, the perfect food plan, the perfect home, and you start pasting it on little boards, toward, toward treasure boards. And then you put it in a little box called your treasure box or your God box, and you turn it, turn it over to the universe, and you start reading them at the end of every month or year and seeing all of the things that you created through visualizations, affirmations, and physicalizations. What you can perceive, you can conceive, and you can achieve. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and I yeah. did that, and that talks about that here. I also have the peel the onion diet, like every year letting go of something. Like one year I let go of white flour, then I let go of sugar, then I let go of coffee, then I let go of animals, then tofu, which is no food. However, <laughs> tofu is good today if you're on the transition diet. And like I say in my book, how to transition to a more plant-based diet. I didn't do this overnight. Most people don't quit smoking overnight or drinking because you usually go back right. and have a double cheeseburger, right. french fries, and a Coke. So I do it slowly and not perfectly. Uh, I have a chapter in my book called Perfectionism, and that killed me every time it killed me. I was a figure skater, and if I could do it, didn't do it perfectly, or if I couldn't be Madonna, Peggy Fleming, or Oprah Winfrey, I wasn't going to do it. Why play, you know? So I have another quote, better to do something imperfectly than nothing flawless. Amen. Amen. And if you fall down, get back up like that punching bag at the at the pier. Just be resilient. <laughs> Bounce back. Try again. Request. Receive. Regift. And you'll keep getting the messages. And affirmations like my body is thin, healthy, firm, and beautiful. I can do whatever I set my mind to do. I'm healing every day in every way. My raw vegan diet or my... Um, my new health regime works for my body so it's fit, fun, firm, and sexy. Uh, so as you know, I'm a, a skater. That's what I love to do because I really feel like I love to skate outdoors. I used to be a figure skater, but now I own my own skate school called Skate Great USA. And the website is skategreat.com where I teach ages, all levels, all ages. I even work with blind, handicapped people. Um, uh, stars, starters, old farters, whatever. <laughs> you know, you can always learn to fly. And when you're raw, your body wants to move. And Where's it's like, your skating school? It's on lovely Santa Monica Beach in Santa Monica, California. Okay. Outdoors, of course. Of course. Getting in the good outdoors, getting those negative ions, and the abundance of the ocean. I love to be outside. If I could sleep outdoors at night, I would, except where I live in L.A. It just gets a little cold. It's no longer sunny California all year round, but I would love to sleep outside. I eat outside. I ex The world is my gym. I barely go indoors, except when I want to swim at the a pool near my home. I do my weights outside. I brisk walk. I bike. I walk in the sand. I do yoga outside. I eat three meals a day outside, and I just go home to sleep. And then when I'm home, I feel claustrophobic, because when you go raw, you're closer to nature. Right. You want to be in nature, right. and your body wants to be barefoot. And it right. wants to be on the ground, connected to nature, connected to people, connected right. to the sun, the trees. And I want to see the mountains. You know, every day I wake up, I want to see the sun, the mountains, or the water. That's why I left New York. You know, right. the only time I could be around nature was when I went to Central Park. The rest of the time, I was staring at buildings.